Hey all, it's Dale from Elephant Memories. In this video, we're going to show you how to turn rough cup maple straight from our local lumber mill into our most popular product, a high quality wood coaster with some fun designs. In this process, we're going to touch on tools, safety, and color filling technique. Tools, materials, and PPE can be found in the description below. So let's get started. We started with five quarter rough cut hard maple. We're gonna cut this board down to a manageable size between 30 and 36 inch lengths on our new saw stop table saw. We'll cut the thickness about five inches wide. A pro tip here, when cutting on a table saw or band saw, you're gonna to wanna to use a push stick. This is gonna help keep your hands a safe distance from the blade. Once our lumber is rough cut to size, you're then gonna to wanna to create a flat and square surface. Here we'll be using a Delta six inch jointer planer. You only need to do this on two sides. Having the sides smooth and flat is really going to help in the re-sawing process in the next step. To do this, you're going to gently push down on the top while using your push stick on the end. You will need to do several passage to get a good clean surface. Once this is done, we're gonna head over to our jet bandsaw. Resawing is the process of cutting the wood along the grain. This is done to create thinner pieces as well as veneers. We're going to set out our fence by measuring from the fence to the inside of the blade. You'll want to add about an eighth of an inch from whatever your finished thickness is supposed to be. So if you want your coasters to be about a quarter of an inch, you're gonna set it to three eighths of an inch. Now adjust the height of the top guide bearing to about six inches or so. Use the push stick with gentle pressure to keep the board flush against the fence. Use your free hand on the end to slowly push and guide the board through the saw blade. Take your time with this and always be aware of where your hands are. If you push too hard, the blade might slightly bend, leaving a burned and uneven resaw cut. We used a 3 quarter inch carbide tip saw blade for this. As you get closer towards the end, move the push stick to the end of the board and your free hand to the front. The push stick is still pushing the board against the fence and also towards the blade. Your other hand is keeping the board stable and will prevent it from falling off once it's cut all the way through. If your board is six quarters or thicker, you can repeat this process. Now over to our DeWalt thickness planer. We initially have this set to half an inch. Now we'll put each board through with the rough side up, making about a quarter turn adjustment with each pass. When all the boards are of equal thickness, then we'll set to our desired end thickness, in this case, a quarter of an inch. In total, we took about an eighth of an inch off. Back to the table saw. We're adding a stop measuring four inches from the inside of the blade on a cross cut sled. This makes our final four by four cuts much more accurate and easier.
Secure the boards down with both hands on each end and make your cut. We create a nice edge by using our Bosch router with an eighth inch roundover bit on our router table. The final step for making these coasters is the sanding table. I'm just doing a rough sand with an orbital hand sander with 180 grit sandpaper to smooth all the sides and edges. Now I'm going to show you how to engrave, color fill, and finish these coasters. First, I add a sanding sealer like shellac. You can spray or brush this on both sides. This is going to help seal the wood from bleeding when we add the paint, but it's also going to help prevent warping over time. Now let this dry overnight. Next, engrave your design. Be sure there's some good depth in your engraving, as we are going to be sanding this and you don't want to be sanding any of the small details away. My Sassy Cat coasters are my best sellers right now. I wiped this down with a little denatured alcohol to get rid of some of the burn residue and let it completely dry. Using a small brush and an inexpensive acrylic paint, I push the paint right into the engraving. You'll want to do up and down, back and forth, and circular motions. This helps get the paint in every little detail. I typically do half the design at a time so the paint won't start drying out. Now take some pre-soaked folded pieces of paper towel and gently start wiping the paint from the surface. With each swipe use less pressure so not to remove the paint from inside the engraving. It's okay if it's not completely clean. As long as you've used enough sealer, it's really going to clean up with the sanding. Repeat the process on the bottom half. Now let this completely dry. If you sand while the paint is still wet, the dust will stick and clog up the engraving. Now you're going to completely sand the sealer off so that the finish goes on properly. You can see the sealer by looking for the shiny areas. Use your sander with 220 grit paper so there's no more shiny areas with the engraving very crisp and clean. With these particular coasters, I'm going to be using a hard wax finish. Because of that, I'm not going to sand the sealer off the back. I don't want to add the wax here because I will be putting a cork backing on this and it won't stick well to the wax. You can use compressed air to remove the dust from the engraving. This is probably my favorite part. The details really pop now. I'll do a quick sand on all the edges to ensure a smooth finished product. I like to have a natural matte like finish on these coasters. A wood serum is going to rehydrate the wood and this is going to prevent any cracking and warping. After about 15 minutes or so, I'm going to add a hard wax finish from Bumbleshoot, a small local New England company. Apply a generous amount of wax on the top surface and the edges and work it in well. Then let it set for about 20 to 30 minutes. And now just give it a good buff. This will leave a wonderful natural wood finish. It's perfect if you don't want a high glass look. 
Now this does take a couple of days to cure, which is similar to most finishes. Now for the final touch. I bought these 4x4 self-adhesive cork backings on Amazon. I like to engrave my branding on the back and cut a small radius. Just peel and stick to the back. And that's the whole process from rough lumber to these very popular high quality wood coasters. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe and give us a thumbs up. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.